Welcome to FaithWorks, the enlightening and empowering program that builds your faith to help you overcome every single challenge in this life. My name is Kaude Adeshoga. I'm your host. I want you to sit back, listen, and be blessed. God bless you. One thing that is absolute clear that God is saying is that it is time for harvest. It's time for our breakthrough. It's time for us to move forward. That you've all dwelt long enough on this mountain. Everyone turn northward. Every single person. And the Lord said to tell you, there's such breakthrough in the house that when everyone manifests it, my goodness, my goodness, for the next three months, no one will preach. It will just be testimonies upon testimonies. Did you hear what I said? And it will continue like that and like that in Jesus' name. So, don't be surprised if I'm done in 30 minutes. Very unlike me, right? <laughs> Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Psalm 102.13. Very familiar passage of scripture. And I guess we'll also be praying. The Bible study was all about praying. He has come again charging us to pray. I said earlier on, I said, I guess we're going to have a prayer service. That means God is saying something. Be people of prayer. Amen? Be people of prayers. Psalm 102.13. It says, Thou shalt arise. Again, I don't feel like shouting. Everything is calm. But don't underestimate the pronouncement. It may not be with noise, but it carries authority. Amen? Psalm 102.13, you shall arise and have mercy upon Zion. For the time to favor her. Let me put it, let me put it this way. Let's read it together. But here I'm read it after me first. But here I'm going to read it. Lord, you have a reason. You now have mercy on Kao Dadi Sugar and his household for the time to favor me. Yea, my set time has come. Let me read again. Lord, you have a reason and shown mercy unto Kao Dadi Sugar and his household. For the time to favor me, the set time for me has come. It's your time for a breakthrough. It's your time to move forward. It's your time for harvest. It's your time to laugh. Is your time to dance? Amen. It's your time to feast. Amen. Not just feast. But I was an Abraham made a great feast. It's your time to make a great feast. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. They've said so much about prayer and processing. But one thing I notice here, when they say your time has come, they endowed you with favor. To receive without favor, that man cannot assess. It took favor for Joseph to assess that through. It wasn't just skill only. For him to assess that through, they got to God. The Bible says the Lord gave Joseph wisdom and then favor. Favor is, you know, wisdom sits on seven pillars. And one of its pillars is called favor, which is the reward mechanism of wisdom. The Bible says in Isaiah Claire says there was a poor man in a city, and the city was besieged. And that man, by his wisdom, delivered that city, but no one remembered him. 
Why? He manifested wisdom. But there was no favor to commensurate a reward system into his life. If the reward mechanism is not engineered by favor, only reap exactly what you sowed. So it means God is enduring you with favor this morning. And that's why the appropriate reward for Joseph was that he should have been released from prison and set free to go back to his father's house. Then they gave him some gold and some change of clothing and some raiment and he would have been very happy. That's a man whose life is void of favor, yet manifesting wisdom. Praise God. I declare you highly favored. Amen. Psalm 5 verse 12, it says that the righteous is blessed and encompassed with favor. That's five, Psalm 5 verse 12. As with a shield. Today from today, favor becomes your companion, Amen. your next of kin. Amen. It becomes your breath. Amen. It becomes your clothing. It becomes everything around you Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. If you turn to your right, you'll find favor. Amen. To your left, you'll find favor. Amen. Behind you to be favor. Amen. Before you is favor. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, Lord was teaching me. He said, there's no authority that works alone. He said, death, for example, is an authority. He said, death and hell. He said, hell is a companion of death. He said, check God too. He has companions. If you look at Psalm 23, for those who do the will of God, he said goodness and mercy is their companion. Psalm 23 is someone who is led by God, who acts only by being led. That's why it says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not lack. He maketh me to lie down in grim, he leads me. It's a leading, it's a Christian who follows the Holy Ghost. So that mercy and goodness their companions come. He said, the angel of the Lord encamp around them that fear him. Those who fear God, his angelic host, just pilot, escort around all over. Because that's an authority too. Praise God. Wisdom said, I wisdom dwell with prudence. So wisdom is an authority. He said, I dwell with what? So prudence is a companion of wisdom. Favor is also a companion of wisdom. Praise God. Amen. 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 The life we live in, in order to be successful, hard work is not enough. You can be intelligent, you can be skillful. But in all, a supernatural ingredient is still behind the success of every great person in this life. Some call it grace. I call it favor. It means the delight. That means someone just delights. You know, I like what they said about Amen. What shall be done to the man whom the, Lord, the king Delights in whom the king finds favor. The Bible says an Esther came before the king and she found favor before the king. All the things they used didn't count anymore. What she used was insignificant to what the other used, but her reward surpassed all what they invested in. That is favor. With the economy that is going on now, without favor, a man cannot survive in this country. You can't survive. You need that oil called favor. In Exodus 3, even if someone is owing you money and you heard his first son just died and you go to the house, you want to ask for your money. I said, his first son just died. That's the cops outside there. You don't ask for your money. Right? That's your money. How much more to borrow? But favor will make you borrow from somebody whose first son just died and they will give it to you. That's why we say favor is a command of a reward, not of your effort, but of God's measure. 
to bless. He said in Matthew 25, he said, come walk in my vineyard and I will give you what is right. Can Abraham walk and end paradise? Which work will he do? In fact, what did Abraham do? What did Abraham do? Slept with his wife at an old age. Is that work? Do you reward a man for sleeping with his wife at an old age with the whole of heaven? I thought he went to war, conquered all the nations of the earth, subdued them and made them worship Jehovah. He didn't do that. And they gave you paradise for that? That's what favor is. It can't align with the investment and the return. They don't add. Praise God. The Bible says in Exodus, the people gave the children, because God gave them favor, gold, silver, and precious raiments. Somebody who just lost their first son, and they were given to somebody who they consider slaves, and give them, that's what favor does. Favor will work for you this week. Anything you have invested in that is yet to bring the return. Favor, I send favor as a spirit to go and bring your returns. And hand them over to you. In the name of Jesus. I declare you favored. You know, I remember there was one time in my life, nothing was working and I was harassed. I was frustrated and I was thinking of walking away from the faith. And the Lord appeared to me in a vision. I said, very good, Lord, you are here. I have some issues we need to sort out. This man didn't let me get this. This man didn't give me this. You know, Mr. So and so, I was reporting people to the Lord. I said, Mr. So and so, is what disturbing your work, oh? This one, he collected it, so I can't do that one. This one, and he was just looking. And when I finished, he said, you, you are highly favored. I said, Lord, you didn't get what I was saying. Let me repeat it. I said, Mr. So-and-so is disturbing me. The money I'm supposed to have gotten, this man sat on it. This one, I was reporting. All. He said, you are highly favored. He did it three times. The third time, he looked angry. And I knew that, oh, Jesus. It took years for me to understand that when you are favored, if they took your car, you will give God praise. When you're favored, if they took your house, you will worship God. If you're not favored, if they took your Bible, you will fight. But if you are favored, if they took all your investment, you will laugh. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. God says it's your hour, it's your time, you have a breakthrough. There's an opening for you. The, it's already opened. <laughs> the stone has been rolled away. It's just for you to go in and take it. In the name of Jesus. The lines are falling onto you in pleasant places. In the name of Jesus. People are going out of their way to aid your cause. In the name of Jesus. The sons of strangers are building your walls. In the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Father. It says, favor is an ingredient when it's time. If God doesn't give you favor and he says it's your time, what will come in will be sad news. Do you desire to live and operate God's way of doing things? Do you desire to understand how faith works? Fundamentals of Faith is a book written by Coyote Adishoga. It teaches in simple terms how to operate the God kind of faith that helps you overcome all hurdles of life. Fundamentals of Faith is available for purchase at Trem Bookshop Obani Koro Lagos and Bible Wonderland Stadium Suruleri Lagos. Get a copy today. Praise Jesus. When they say it's time for a breakthrough, as God puts favor, it also means an opportunity is coming before you. Ecclesiastes 9.11 says, The race is not given to the swift, the battle not to be strong, nor favor to the skillful, nor bread to the wise. But time and chance happeneth to everyone. So God says, it's your hour of breakthrough. It means a window of opportunity. It's about to open before you. Hallelujah. And I'm just going to pray one prayer for that. That's why I said it's still a prayer service. I'm not preaching. I need you to uh, handle this break. He said, John said, the things, that which we have seen, which we have heard, which we have handled, which we, I want you to handle and experience it.
means a window is open before you. Amen. Now, the prayer I want to pray for you is that God, you know, in Luke 19, he said, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how I long to gather you as a hen, gather these chicks, but you were not willing. For you knew not this day, thy day of visitation, for the things that make for your peace are hidden from you. That which makes for your peace will be revealed to you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. He says, I not your eyes with eyes serve. O God of my Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, I ask for the anointing of eyes serve to come on every eye here Amen. that your eye will open Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. That you will recognize the carriers of your peace Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. That the star bringing them will lead them to your doorstep Amen. and you will receive them. In the name of Jesus. And whatever they brought from the Lord, they will deliver it to your hands. In the name of... Paul, someone was telling Saul, he said, when you go from here, you will meet three men. They'll be carrying a pitcher, bread. He said, whatever they give to you, take it. They are carriers of your peace. They are sent by God. Messengers to aid your elevation in life. He said, they are carrying things. They are always people carrying things for your elevation. Oh God, I pray that your path and their path will meet and you will collect from their hands what is yours in the name of Jesus. What Satan tries to do when it's your eye, he tries to bring distractions so that it brings quarrel. Quarrel here and there so that when those carriers are peace are passing, the person is busy handling quarrels that are inconsequential. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. You will not miss your window. I guess it wasn't only uh, Rebecca that was the only daughter of that, kid that was wetting the camels. The rest left. The rest left. Abby, what made her stay? Why did the rest go? Satan drove. He must have done something that maybe attracted and took them away. That one stood. Her day came. Her day came. And her day, she was at the right place. At the right time. You will be at the right place. Amen. You will be at the right time. Amen. Doing the right thing. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Then the servant said, can you give me water? That was her window. When that request comes, if it's from God, you will hack in onto it. Amen. You will respond positively. Amen. In the name of Jesus, because the Bible says he wasn't sure, for he thought, could it be that God has answered? He was still contemplating, so he wasn't very sure. If she said no, he would have said, no, this is not it. You know, I've said one thing about life. I define it, life, as knowing what to do part time and doing it. That's like, when you see a disaster, it's a series of windows missed. When you see a breakthrough, it's a series of windows seized. There is no accident in breakthroughs and disasters. I told you about the young man that died, 28 year old. The window was missed. I said, damn, how did we miss this? Just, oh, oh Jesus, how did we miss this? While in coma, we were, we were doing prayer chain. I was praying 12 to 5 every day for 10 days. God said, the window is missed. There's nothing you can do again. It's all over. Say, anointing for burial. That's the next agenda. I said, no. My wife said, I said, I'm feeling peace. I said, are you sure that peace is not for burial? I said, it will not happen. I said, whatever it will take. He said, the window is missed. He said, like a fish caught out of water. He said, once the window is missed, it's all over. It cannot be retrieved again. It's gone. It's gone. You will not miss yours. Amen. You will not miss yours. Amen. You will not miss yours. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. They said, and they've all said it's speed, prayer. The other man that came to pray said, speed. When it's your time, God will put speed Amen. into your feet. Amen. And a three-day journey, you begin to accomplish it in the evening. It is say one day. That's not. He said the evening. A day is 24 hours. The evening of a day is 12 hours. 12 hours. Take note. Three days and three nights is not the same as three days. Three days is different from three days and three nights. Three days is 12 hours. Three days and three nights is 24 hours. But I said, by the evening of the first day, he began to enter into need of a three-day journey. Every aspect of your life that has suffered delay, 
May the Lord restore those years unto you. In the name of Jesus. May he put feet speed on your feet. In the name of Jesus. He said, may you pursue. May you overtake. And may you recover. In the name of Jesus. Say, I pursue. I overtake. I recover all. I pursue. I overtake. And I recover all. I pursue. I overtake. And I recover all. In the name of Jesus. No longer. He says, no longer shall that vision be heard. Or that idiom that the fathers have seen and the children are eating that there's a delay to every vision. He said, no, it's not going to happen. He said, it will speed up and it will happen quickly in the name of Jesus. Also, when they say it's your time, he says that in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, 11, he says, he maketh all things beautiful in his time. Beautiful. I'm not talking of physical beauty. Everything will turn and become beautiful. Begin to work for your good. In the name of Jesus. Amen. From today, every aspect of your life. He says for your shame, you will have double honor. For shame, receive double honor. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. For shame, receive double honor. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. For shame, receive double honor. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Every aspect of your life that has brought reproach. Let it begin to bring glory to God. Amen. Let it begin to bring honor to God. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Where you have been looked down upon. Let men look up to you. In the name of Jesus. When men laughed at you. Let them laugh with you. In the name of Jesus. When they laughed at you. Let them laugh with you. In the name of Jesus. Let the ties turn in your favor. In the name of Jesus. I prophesy that every aspect of your life. Begin to look beautiful. Begin to look beautiful. He said begin to become a sweet aroma. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise, oh God. In the name of Jesus. We're still praying. We're actually praying. We're actually praying. Don't be surprised. I'll handle this. I'll do a teaching on this next week. That when your breakthrough shows up like this, some of you have already experienced it. The tires will show up. Satan will show up. The kingdom of darkness will show up. For some, you've already experienced it and you've conquered it. And they show up in different means. I remember, I told you about those two spirits I saw entering the year. That was 2015. The spirit of accidents, medical complications, and the spirit of death. And I notice that most of the time, they visit people that are close to their breakthroughs. That I have studied. Because I have also noticed most of the places where they visited and they were rooted out, monumental breakthroughs came. I was telling somebody. I said, I asked the person to sell the car. And the person just gave the car. Prior to then, I said, somebody wants to die. I could feel it. I could sense it. When they permitted, I said, who has sent it? Somebody said, my hand. I said, who is it? Mention the person's name. He said, no wonder. You know, I've always said when someone is glowing in the midst of too much crisis, it may not necessarily mean victory, it could mean death. I said, this glow is unusual. It's an, I said, it's an angel that's come to pick her. I need to shortchange quickly. So I told the person to sow the car, and the person sold. And the Lord spoke to me. I, I never knew. I said, you would have slept on the 14th of August, and you would not have woken up on the 15th of August. The person laughed. <laughs> it sounded like a joke. And the daughter said, my father slept on the 14th of August and did not wake up on the 15th of August. Shortly after that August, the 
person got married. Did I start highlighting all the things that happened? And the Lord said, when you see the oppression, that's the harvest of that person. He said, they've come to destroy the harvest, shortchange it and end it in the person's life. I remember that young man was, that died told me on the phone, said, I just planned this. I want you to visit my, um, my business setting that I'm just setting up. I'm setting up this, 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 this. I'm just setting up a so, so, and so. We're just opening. I want, and, I, this had, and you could tell this is a business that is going to boom. He was just about to start booming. Those spirits attacked and took him out straight. And I've noticed that progression like that. After they've suffered and it's time for them to reap the harvest, they are taken out. So, Taz, don't, why are you looking down? Don't worry. That's my job. Your job is not to deal with the task. He said, and I'll send to the reapers. Gather first the task. They are specialized, skilled spirit beings. Right? Don't worry. That's what I'm equipped to do. And I will do a good job for the Lord. In Jesus' name. I want to reassure you, I'm losing nobody here. Never. It won't happen. You will all live to the ripe old age. I assure you that. In the name of Jesus. I'm assuring you in the name of Jesus. I'm not assuring you by my own power. I'm assuring you in the name of Jesus. Do you hear me? You will, all of you, if you don't want to live long, you are, it's too late. You are going to cross 80. You will live very long. And you will live well. In good health. In peace. In prosperity. In the name of Jesus. You heard the testimony I shared earlier. About the lady. You know, I told you, fibroid is becoming mutated. It's mutating. It's those spirits. The Lord said, it's those spirits. They're mutating fibroid to become cancerous. So you find about 40, 45% of women with fibroid, the fibroid is turning to cancer. It's cancerous. He said she has cancer of the fibroid, cancerous fibroid, and it's beginning to spread. She said, what do I do? I said, you have settled death. You have settled sickness. What did she do? She gave up all her gold. You may look at me somehow. All her gold, Jesus. The same cancerous fibroid that many have done surgery and didn't survive. She didn't do surgery. At Luth, they diagnosed the cancerous fibroid. After three months at last week, they diagnosed nothing. Everything vanished, vaporized. Both the cancer and the fibroid all disappeared. He said, but we can see a lining to show that something melted in your womb and went out. So we'll deal with the tears. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. In Genesis 18, the Bible says that the Lord visited Sarah when it was her time. The Lord visited her as he had promised. Many of you will receive the visitation of the Lord Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord will visit you. Amen. If he doesn't visit you, his messengers will visit you. Amen. They'll bring to you a message of peace Amen. and good tidings Amen. in the name of Jesus. I believe you have been blessed by that message and I know your faith has been built up and I know all those challenges in life are all going to fall before you in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to know Hebrews 12 says, Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. You need him in this walk. And so if you're out there and you don't have Jesus in your life, I want you to say after me, say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you're the only begotten Son of God. Come into my life, be my Lord and my Savior. It's as simple as that. Displayed on the screen is diverse information on how you can interact and reach out to us. Take advantage of it and I'll be expecting to hear from you. Till I come your way again same time next week, I want to tell you, don't give up. Faith works. It's working, and it will work in your life. God bless you.